Hello everyone, welcome back to our coverage of RSA Conference 2024. We're here recording live from Broadcast Alley in Moscone West, and this interview is sponsored by Hive Pro. I'm Bill Brenner, and joining me today for this interview is Zara Perzada. Thank you. Did I get it right? You got it right. There we go. You got it right. VP of Product Marketing at Hive Pro. And we're going to talk about CTEM, understanding the essentials and why it matters. I do want to remind you all before we start with questions that uh, if you want to keep track of our content today, you could do so by going to securityweekly.com forward slash Hive Pro Say, S-A-E. And with that, welcome. Thank you, thank you. So let's just get right to it. Let's talk a bit about how CTEM enables tool integration. So by that I mean with your existing security tools and with infrastructure. Okay. A great place to start from, to baseline this, is to talk to the acronym. There are a ton of acronyms in the security game and sometimes they just get really overwhelming. Especially in the cloud realm. Especially in the yeah. cloud realm. I was coming from Gartner as a former Gartner analyst and while we were there, we were really acclimated to building this headache for others. But now while I'm in the vendor world, I'm here to inherit the headache. And so let's make sure just to uh, bring everyone into the conversation of CTM and baseline it with that definition. What is continuous threat exposure management? At its heart, it's threat informed defense. Yep. So to say threat exposure management is how can I limit, if I'm a vendor, how can I help limit your exposure to threats? Now, how does it integrate with infrastructure, your current securities tool stack? Well, it depends on how any one vendor goes about it. It is, after all, a framework by Gartner with that, that explicit purpose, that intended purpose to limit threat exposure. You're going to see a slew of vendors uh, now with this messaging on exposure management saying I'm going to proactively find a way to find the things that are wrong and to tell you what is wrong and what threat actors are likely to look for, ideally. That's the ideal case. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to validate your controls. So then what infrastructure would you want to integrate with? What would you, what would you ideally want inside of your organization to speak to each other? Most tools are non-interoperable. That's just how vendors work a lot of the time. They want you part of their shop. Well, I'll talk about it in the way that we address it because you're going to see many others addressing it differently. It's a, it's a very, I would say, uh, it, it's starting at its beginning, this market. So what we do is we bring in your scanners. You have vulnerability scanners. You have asset scanners. You have even a tool that's looking at your, your CMDB, for instance, looking at the, scan, the assets that your IT team knows about. We bring those together, we're a sticky point for them, so you're able to see fully what scanned assets and unscanned assets by your vulnerability scanners are you looking at, and what's wrong with them in some. Now, we go beyond vulnerabilities, we look at exposure points too. So what does that mean? Ideally, your scanners can look for misconfigurations. Ideally, your scanners can look at software that hasn't been updated or maybe even uh, uh, look at the blind spots that you might have in risk based on zero days or vulnerable assets. Mm -hmm. So any tool that is collecting that telemetry, we are ingesting. That's what we're integrating with to begin with. Though I can't speak for other vendors, there are a slew of security tools to integrate with and it depends on the customer's need for us. So let's talk about, um, you know, the, the we're in the hype cycle with AI right now. And so, with any technology, the question is how AI fits in mm -hmm. and further enables a product, including CTEM. Mm. So yes. talk a bit about that, if you can. Vendors are using, AI is a blanket term. It's, when, when I say you have the right to privacy, I'm talking about penumbra of rights that you have that amount to your expectation for privacy. 
If I talk about the AI in that similar fashion, what I'm looking at uh, under the hood of AI is uh, soft AI and hard AI. Uh, that being what is uh, machine learning and then otherwise what is actually being as human as possible. So I want to make sure that I take away the hype of AI over here and how I'm normally seeing vendors use it is to optimize for efficiency a security tool. So that is helping you to limit your false positives. That is helping you to automate more, building better algorithms that help you streamline your workflows. That is technically how we're seeing it. Now the LLM explosion that we've been privy to and witness to in the past year or two has taught us that we can give natural language uh, questions and receive natural language answers and have a very focused analysis about the data that's at hand. That is another way AI is being used. So right now for the security world, we're going on the path of optimizing and in building for efficiency with machine learning. And otherwise, we're integrating natural language processing to help analyze better. That's what's happening. So let's talk about CTEM and the role it plays in really enabling this distributed workforce that we came out of the pandemic with, where some people are working from home or anywhere really, and some are on site. How does this come into play? Yeah, this again goes to what CTEM, the potential CTEM holds. Exposure also is identity. I like to use the phrase that Gartner has often gone with, not only is identity the new perimeter, identity is the perimeter. Uh, it's all about that. With the remote for a workforce that we currently have, even the hybrid workforce that we have, and, and the freedom that people have garnered from working remote, the truth is we have to make sure that identity is accounted for and all of the actions that that identity goes about are valid. And they hold up the principles of CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability for our data. And for that to happen, we need to make sure that we're also logging identity as a part of our exposure. What identities, what accounts are exposed, which ones are being misused. Uh, so CTEM is looking, inherently come back to the basics, the definition. It's looking at what is exposed to threats. So I want to know how exposed is this identity, this digital identity, not the person themselves, but the digital identity to threats. And so that is how CTEM is utilizing that frame of reference. Otherwise, yes, I want to know what assets are out there. My endpoints, what endpoints are out there? How are they controlled? How are they managed? And how fortified are those assets? Mm -hmm. So we're also looking at that. Let's talk about um, another area where this comes in, and that's the regulatory landscape. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot going on with regulations right now. Um, some of the newer actions being because of things like AI. Mm -hmm. um, but talk about how this comes into play there as an enabler for those who are looking to stay on top of their compliance efforts. Yeah, yeah. Every SOC 2, type 2, ISO, uh, if, if you're going to get a credit for ISO, if you're following the guidelines of NIST CSF, even if you look at the update of NIST CSF, everything is asking you at its bare form, PCI DSS, even HIPAA, everyone's saying, have a vulnerability management program in place. Find a way to limit your risk. The fundamentals of all of these frameworks are just set in good hygiene. CTEM is asking for good hygiene. At its base, at its core, why we exist as a function in cybersecurity as practitioners. I'm going to eliminate this perspective of vendor for a moment. I come from the practitioner world. We exist to fight threats. We exist to defend against threats. What CTEM is doing is it's enhancing every bit of your regulatory framework in that you can build trust in your company and your end users knowing that you can securely answer, am I secure from threats? And that's what CTEM is doing. It's enhancing and it's enabling. In fact, if you look at the iteration in this CSF, we're looking at more threat exposure management as a versioning uh, ask. Likewise for ISO. So CTEM is, I want to say, revolutionizing vulnerability management as we know it, to expanding it to an idea of coming back to threats and saying, how can we be proactive and preventative? Threat-informed defense. Not just self-inflicted vulnerabilities, not just fitting the framework in a checkbox for your auditor, but truly feeling in your gut that you have responded to what could be threats in the best way possible. That's what CTEM's doing. Great. Now, um, does Hypro have a booth, a booth down in the expo hall? We do. 
All we right. do. You can visit us at 5248, I'm sure. Uh, if I've gotten the number wrong, my apologies. I'm more than likely uh, certain that it's 5248. Um, and you can come visit us there. In any case, I will be waving and talking to every practitioner that is coming by. And I hope to see them there. We can talk about continuous threat exposure management. We were it last year. We're not a rebrand. Many are talking about exposure management as rebrands today. We were purpose built for it. Mm -hmm. So I hope to convey to people what that means. Your main sauce. The main sauce. The main sauce. Consistency is key. Indeed. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. And again, for more, please visit securityweekly.com forward slash Hive Pro R S A C. And we'll be back. <laughs>